get out of bed this instant. And turn it on. Glenn, Angel, and the Flying Dutchman. The Big Show on Kiss 92. Good morning, Singapore. Welcome to The Big Show and The Big Show TV. Uh, we are absolutely live on Facebook and uh, YouTube right now, as well as on the air. Our guest for today, and we are so happy to have her with us, Janice Wong, finally, right here in the Kiss studio. Good what? morning, Janice. Good morning. Thank what you took again. you so long? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe the chocolates. <laughs> Maybe, Maybe the, the chocolates. chocolates. What took you guys so long to, <laughs> to invite, invite me on the show? Yeah, huh? we were just reminiscing off air. How um, your first outlet, 2 a.m. dessert bar, opened in 2007 in Holland Village and is still there. That's correct. How yeah. did it make it through everything that we've gone through and it's still standing? You know, I mean, it's still relevant. Like, how does that make you feel after so many years? Well, it's good. I think, you know, it's it's become an institution as well. It's, it's like family. You know, you come in, you're familiar with the space. Um, you come and have a nice glass of wine, dessert. Um, it's not too fancy. It's also something that's very comfortable in the neighborhood. Um, and I and I guess that's the charm. And you guys are open literally till two a.m. every yeah, day. Every mm. day. Isn't that great? That's we awesome. should go have a glass of wine. And I think so. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Speaking What's of taken an institution, us so long? You're an institution. <laughs> time yeah. flies. Time, time does fly. I mean, when fly. two a.m. dessert bar came about, that's when we first, uh, you know heard of you and uh wow i mean you've you've um you've gone on to bigger and and better things right now you've expanded mm -hmm. you have uh uh expanded into uh, the uk selfridges yeah selfridges, australia yeah. yeah with your very own 2 a.m dessert bar but also in singapore your most recent one the janice wong, wong pure imagination at the super tree observatory that's correct that, tell us a little bit about that yeah. because we've never been obviously Really excited about it. I mean, uh, everyone visits the Super 3 when they're in Singapore. It's like, a, it's like a top on your list to visit. And, mm. you know, it's also so iconic. So that space is so beautiful in itself. The sweets and the chocolates that we created are also kind of reflecting Singapore. So you got these beautiful like cloud forest cakes. Um, that's going to be launched in uh, January. Now we're launching everything Christmassy. But, you know, you've got... Everything that is like super three um, look and feel, the cloud forest, and and um, even a garden theme. Mm. Now, what's very special is we are also showcasing the story of Singapore chocolate right there. Okay, Singapore chocolate. Singapore that's chocolate. Correct. That's actually something I want to talk yeah. about. Singapore chocolate, uh, cacao trees. Mm. Um, actually, I have a little surprise for you. I'm going to give it to you on the Big Show TV. So we'll I knew that. Yeah, you, did yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Did you? You forgot. He, he, you? No, he remembered. Yeah, he no, remembered. he didn't. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Join let's, us on the Big Show TV. Let's continue to talk to Janice on the Big Show TV. Up next, here's Lato and Mariah Carey featuring DJ Khaled. This is Big Energy on Kiss 92. Take the ball away. <laughs> oh, was that in shot? Oh, no, no in just this for shot. her shot. Okay. Yeah. So I remember last May, I had to look through my Instagram, obviously. Last May, I went to an event for the McAllen, That's and right. you were doing a collaboration with them to introduce, although you had already introduced it the year before, I think, um, wanting to plant a thousand cacao trees in Singapore. That's correct. How's that going? It's not too bad. Okay. We're about halfway. Halfway, okay. Wow. We're still donating a lot of these trees. Mm -hmm. um, we just planted about 10 of them, over 10 of them at JW Merritt, South Beach. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really unique as well. How it's long does it take for one to mature? About mature. two years. Two years, okay. That's not right. too bad, huh? Yeah, bad. so the ones so that we planted when we first started, they've already started fruiting. Okay, so at this event, just a little bit going back a bit, at this event you gave us all these little pots with uh, little cacao uh, seeds in them, you know, and I, she said, you know, water them, look after them. She told us how to water them, look after them. It's been sitting on my shelf for this entire year and a half and nothing has happened. So this morning I thought I'd bring it in. So I had the little pot, wow. right? I had the little pot, had all the soil inside. I took the taxi to grab coming to work, you know, put it on the seat. And all of a sudden the guy jams his brake, right? Oh, no. The whole thing flies, right? Oh, and no. I'm thinking to myself, no, it's okay because it's been there for one and a half years. I'm sure everything is kind of clumped together mm -hmm. and stuck in one thing. No, everything flew. So here's my little pot. Oh, and yeah. as you can see, I have no tree inside. <laughs> <laughs> 
there you go. My little pot with no tree. But uh, honestly, it nothing happened for me. And you told us at the event, if nothing happens, give you back the pots and the seeds. I give you back the pot. And you can <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering, what gift is this <laughs> yeah, you have for Janice? That's Janus. that little pot from the event. Add something else la, to the I, pot. I, well, there was something inside which flew it's out. It's now all, all over the back of a cab. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Obviously, you've never kept a Tamagotchi in your life. No, never. <laughs> Janice, tell me, th- this whole cacao thing, you actually went to the Amazon to investigate cacao. Is that true? That's correct. What was that like? Well, I think you, you kind of got to immerse yourself, you know, when you want to learn something and, and when you want to also kind of get inspiration. Um, so I kind of just just did that about seven, eight years ago when, I'm sorry, you know, seven, seven to eight days. About a few years ago, I went there and I just immersed myself, went to Tarapoto, went to the Amazons, um, kind of lived with the locals and I went alone. That was the nice. key thing. Nice. Because nice. every time when you go with a friend, you know, you're, you're always kind of chatting and, mm. and, and right, right. Right, yeah. yeah, but I wanted to really just be with the locals, right? And then work. So I was working on the farms a little bit um, and understanding, you know, the livelihood of these farmers and also the quality Mm. of cocoa and also how to grow them better. Right. I mean, so when you when you speak about cacao trees and cocoa, Singapore is not on anyone's list to find trees like that here. Do we have the climate for it? Yep, for sure we do. Okay. I mean, it rains a lot here. It's very humid. Um, but, you know, with a little bit of care and shade, it is possible. We have kind of uh, made it seem like it's, it's definitely possible. I mean, you look at gardens itself. Mm. It's so rich in that nature and so, so many trees are, are there. You have vanilla beans, mm. you have coffee trees. Um, if they can do it, I'm sure we can. It's just that we don't have no land. That's mm. yeah. That's mm. also true. But you've got something problem. going there. I feel like because cacao is such a huge business. It is massive. We were just talking about it this morning. Yeah, right? and I think um, you know why. I mean, you mentioned Singapore chocolates just now. Is that because of you know the chocolate is made from from these uh, uh, cacao? Trees is it made here? from the cacao trees here? Yeah, some of them are, but okay. you know it's in such a small quantity. We basically only do it for tasters. Um, so we've committed not to do it for sale and also these are for kids the mm. schools that kind of um, host our trees okay. mm. and so the kids and the school teachers get the first hand in tasting them Ooh. Yeah. Oh, nice. I want to be in a school like but that but cacao farms here in Singapore not not really possible huh? no do you it's think it's possible, possible to do make it into like an uh, like an urban farm like in a building no not as also well. not possible okay all mm. right okay oh, so okay. speaking uh, speaking of schools and all that you have like some workshops that you provide uh under your website janiswong.online things like your christmas tree painting workshop your chocolate appreciation workshop your chocolate painting workshop why do you think it's so important for people to get to know chocolate and why do you think it's so important for people to indulge in good chocolate? Well, I think chocolate is such a like happy food, you know. And and not only that, I think for us when when we started out, I always wanted to first inspire and educate. Um, and you know, when we had this space in Great Wall City, we're like, let's do lots and lots of workshops for people of all ages. And you know, people have no idea that actually cacao is a fruit. Mm. And there are so many processes behind it. So it's for sure extremely important to bring that to the people. And so they understand food better. Mm. Um, I think for us, it's also about imagination. Now, when you come and paint, and for sure, I would love to invite all of you Ooh. to come and paint out in our, in our workshop. Now, it's, it's so fun. Like we've got 20, 30 people on the weekends and they, they just splash and they, they're decorating their chocolate trees. But they re-gift it. It's the season of gifting. Mm. So when you paint with your own imagination and you give your loved one something beautiful, not only that, when they receive this chocolate Christmas tree that's decorated by you, there's a surprise inside as well. Ooh, oh, oh, I'm not yeah. going to spoil the surprise. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. More chocolate. <laughs> Wait, so, so people can just go down there and just... Uh, Do they have to sign up first? Have to register? Register? Yeah. Online? You just sign up online. Online, okay. But I'll okay. send you a text. Oh, okay. Yeah, send me a text. <laughs> okay. Uh, Everyone, gonna... do this. Yeah. I think it's, it's, uh, it's so nice. Especially at this point, right? Everyone's thinking like, what should be... For gift. Christmas, right? Yeah, so and so as a gift, and right? And it's such a sustainable gift because it's perishable. So mm. it doesn't leave anything on, on earth, you know? So mm. you give it, you eat it, and you're done. Mm. Yeah. And then you remember it. So yeah. okay. I'll talk a little bit about your ice cream when we go back uh, yes. on the radio. Kiss 
92 traffic. On the BKE towards the PIE at the KJE PIE exit, look out for an accident vehicle. If you have any other news, it's 8855-0920. Good morning and welcome back to The Big Show and The Big Show TV. Our guest for today is Celebrity Pastry Chef. Should I call you a pastry chef? Are you a pastry chef? Yeah, uh, pastry or chef or a slash artist. Uh, uh, slash artist, not chocolatier? Oh, both. Uh, oh, okay. Pastry kind of covers it all. Okay, all right, okay. Like, So if you were to, like, why did you choose chocolate as opposed to, say, pastry? Oh, you I know? love chocolate. <laughs> Hands down, Simple answer. Number one. Yeah. Is it easier than, say, coming up with like a croissant or a puff of any sort? Well, I got to kind of choose. I can't do it all, you know. And I think my love for chocolate is so, so like, I don't know. I, I just love it so much. It's so present, right? Mm. And up to today, I mean, 20 years down, I, I still eat chocolate every day. Mm. 20 years, my goodness. Every day. And you know, uh, Janice Wong, by the way. I, yeah. mean, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, what should I call you? Uh, pastry chef, uh, but you mentioned artist. artist so, yeah. so um, uh, chocolate artist? Yep, you can call me that. Yeah. How about that? Were you Not good? Bad. I mean, were you good at like art that. in school? Not at all. So <laughs> how... how how does one go from not being good in art, art. to becoming an artist, especially well, for food? Art is, is something that is all about freedom of expression, right? Mm. You, you can just do it and you tell your story. I think if, if, if you're so passionate about it, you, anyone can do it. So that's my philosophy when I was a kid. I mean, I was like, all right, let's just express. Let the people judge for themselves mm. whether they like it or not. So I started painting with chocolate. And the people loved it. Mm. So I continued. And I still, yeah, kind of still do it. What would you say to people who, who find your art a little bit intimidating? Like, you know, we go to Paragon, for example. And, yeah. and yeah. we see your, your works of art there. You know, it's almost um, a, a too, too pretty yeah. to eat for some people. You know, mm. what, what do you have to say to, to those people who walk by and they look and they're like, Really? We can eat this? You know? <laughs> it is true. We just, uh, we just served a few people yesterday and they couldn't believe it's chocolates. But, mm. you know, uh, after all, it's it's about like um, everything is handmade, right? And it's, it's just beautiful gems of chocolate. And I think for me, it's all about like putting all that into a box. And, you know, when you unveil the box, it's not just about the colors, but the shapes as well. And so you, you, you kind of have to choose. And that's why the advent calendar is so, so unique. Because, you know, with a group of friends, you all just kind of poke a hole and you don't know what you're going to get. Yeah, and it doesn't matter for the days. I believe advent calendars should be opened up all at once. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's got to be difficult, though. I mean, you've been doing this for so many years. You're, you've been called the queen of desserts, the superwoman of Singapore desserts. Where do you get your inspirations? Does anyone still inspire you? For sure. I think for me, you know, the culture is very, very important. I get to travel a lot, but meet a lot of people. And, you know, there's so many things that we could do. And for now that we're, we're a bit more established, we're actually using that to the advantage and helping more people. For example, farmers mm. going direct source, uh, making a change we can order instead of just... 20 kilos of chocolate we're ordering from them maybe two tons of chocolate and it completely changes their livelihood mm. um, so I'm really excited about that being able to make that big change for mm. people I nice. love it I love it good. Uh, what, do you, what do you think of uh, Singapore's current uh, um, you know scene in terms of like dessert places oh it's so vibrant I love it and I wish it was a bit earlier but uh, it's never too late and more and more are going to come in, more of these uh, bakeries and uh, pastry shops. But it's completely elevated our scene here. And, you know, we were never once known for pastry or chocolate. And now look at Singapore. Yeah. We have the best of the best. Yeah. And it's really attracting a lot of talent. Um, I feel really happy about our nation, you know, evolution. And um, it's just delicious. Yum. Okay, speaking of yum, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, single origin Colombia coffee, Ooh. coconut lime, mm. mango banana, passion fruit sorbet, mm. sea salt, all sorts of yummy flavors on The Big Show TV. We're having a delicious time with Janice <laughs> Wong. It is 8.14. Kiss 92 time check brought to you. So roasted pistachio, hazelnut, single origin Colombia chocolate. These are just some of the flavors at your... 
ice cream shop, I'm going to call it, at That's Great cool. World. Uh, I have walked past this place a couple of times, Soft House, but I did not know it was under the Janice Wong group. Um, why? When did you move on to ice cream? I think it was about two years ago. I wanted to also, you know, kind of create that sweet... Um, I would say that that sweet imagination, right? And uh, with ice cream, you can do so much. It's not just a scoop of ice cream. You got your know, toppings, and and it's all also about your mood for the day. And that's for me an impulse buy. It's like not like chocolates, not so much, but it's really like oh, today I feel like pistachio. Oh, I like I want something happier. I want something like lychee, watermelon. And, you know, I think ice cream brings also the same type of joy in, in people's lives. Mm, yeah, it is. Ice cream is always such a happy, oh my God. happy dessert. It's my weakness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I you know, haven't sometimes tried I deliberately ice. try to stay away from <laughs> ice cream because I can't stop eating it. Well, next time you're at Great World, you can pick up yeah, a soft yeah. house. Does it come in cones, cups, or both? Both. Both, okay. And the waffle. And what's and the, the Oh, and a waffle. The waffle. What's the top flavor? Well, you have to say it's chocolate and cookies and cream. I mean, Ooh. the kids love these cookies and cream. Mm. Yeah, yeah. What about for your bonbons and all that? Is there a top flavor for that as well? For sure. I think the praline and popping candy. That's popping always candy. the top flavor. Wow, we haven't had those in a while. Remember those popping packets we used to candy. buy? Yeah. And throw in your tongue and it gets to your ears? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> popping so, candy. So right now, Janice, you're located at, uh, of course, I mean, Great Wall City. And then uh, there's Paragon. Um, Super Tree, which is the latest one. Where else? Uh, Holland Village. Holland, Holland Village. Village. The original. Oh, that's two AM dessert bar. Yeah, so yeah, they have two obviously in Great mm. World because the chocolate and the ice cream. Yes, and then London is, um, and Sydney. Yeah, we just opened a new bar in Sydney. The two AM dessert, dessert bar. bar. Oh, so when you say just, how how just is that? Well, two months ago. Wow! Congratulations. Which part of Sydney? Uh, it's in the W Hotel in Darling Harbour. In the Harbor. W. What oh, a perfect yeah. spot. Darling okay. Harbour. Perfect. perfect. Perfect, perfect spot. So if you're on We're the way going to Sydney... in February. We're going to Australia in February, yeah. yeah. So maybe we'll be at the W. I'm sure we'll be in Sydney. Okay. They haven't told us yet. Yeah. <laughs> but we are going to a few cities, cities. in Australia. And we're broadcasting from there. So Amazing. So if we do end up in Sydney, maybe we should broadcast from the 2 a.m. dessert bar. We'll I'm definitely sure. visit the 2 a.m. dessert yeah, bar. Yeah, showcase some local... Local presence yeah. in a city like Sydney. I and you know, everyone's great. heading up to uh, Australia yeah. anyway. It is they, summer. Yeah. No, yeah. no, no. As in, as in oh, like, everyone, end of the year. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Who's it, listening right now? No, that's why I if say you're summer. in Sydney. Oh, so, oh yeah. It's yeah, it's summer. summer. Yeah, it's summer. I'm forgetting. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so if you're headed up towards uh, Sydney, go uh, and visit uh, the 2 a.m. dessert bar. At the W. At the W, Darling Harbour. Nice. Fantastic. Okay. okay, so what's next for world domination? <laughs> <laughs> I think for me it's just really continuing the whole edible art as well as the chocolate I definitely want to reinvent you know the idea of uh, chocolate itself so with the Singapore chocolate that's kind of already um, I, I think we laid the, the ground for it for people to continue this uh, craft of uh, chocolate making and growing plants in their backyards homes restaurants so that's kind of already said but I think for me it's also about pushing the imagination how far more can we push that um, so we're taking a few of our chocolate edible art um, across the world next year we've got um, Fiji a bit nice. of uh, St. Moritz in, in Switzerland as well as we're painting at the Australia Open in Melbourne oh, oh wow nice. that's fantastic so congratulations some chocolate uh, sweet art from us all the way in Singapore and always not forgetting showcasing Singapore flavors for sure and you're gonna have a wall edible wall as well that's right you always do that that's right really so what uh, would your Singapore flavors be say for somewhere like Melbourne Oh, for sure, it'll be like laksa leaf, oh, uh, wow. ginger flower, rojak. I love telling these stories. You know, I mean, our flavors are so profound, beautiful, and delicious, and people don't know them at all. Laksa leaf and chocolate, that just sounds laksa so leaves, good. Yeah. I love chili chocolate. Chili so is. The laksa will be spicy laksa and chocolate. That laksa leaf sounds really good with chocolate, I gotta say. Mm. Mm. How do you do so much, uh, Janice? <laughs> it still looks so how do you fresh and so good. It's yeah. like, how big is your team? Why are you actually a lot working? of chocolate. Wait, yeah, no, 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 I am, but I am I mean, people are like, no, 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 you can't indulge in chocolate every day, but you are proof that you can indulge in chocolate every day. It just depends on what kind of chocolate it is, right? Exactly. What about, yeah. is, is yours Dark is not sugar-free chocolate. chocolate, is it? No, we do have some option, especially the ice cream. We've got 100%. Uh, but, you know, I love my chocolate dark, so 70% is perfect. Mm. Yeah. Mm. 
I, I've I've started to um, better for you as to well. up the uh, my my, my chocolate. I mean, I love dark chocolate as yeah. well. One time I used to have like seventy percent and all that, but now I've I've uh, upped it to like. 86 yeah, I can't do the 92. past 90 I can't wow. do the 90s I, I, I did yeah. a 92 yeah. It was okay actually okay. Really? It was okay. actually okay I, can't yeah. get I, that I bought two bars One was like 92 And the other one was like 86 or something I finished the 92 And now I'm having the 86 I feel like it's perfect 86? Okay yeah. maybe that's a magic number for Is there a magic number for, for chocolate though? I mean Where does it start to go from Not as good for you to better for you usually 70 70? 70 is always kind of the magic number it's the sweet spot you got you got a little bit of that sweet balance and and then you know you can really taste the profile of chocolate mm, okay do you do you sell chocolate bars as well yeah we do we <coughs> open a new brand called pure imagination bean to bar okay and uh, we conch chocolate right here in singapore uh, we import a lot of these uh, Peruvian, uh, Colombian beans um, to really showcase that chocolate's like wine. You have so many different profiles, flavors. Mm. Um, so not just only in these bonbons, but then you can also use it for cooking. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, there's a lot of application for it. So mm. there you go. How do I know a chocolate is a good chocolate? Mm. What do I look for? If you go back for a second bite... That's a good chocolate. Good chocolate. Yeah, but I, mean, I mean, you have a lot of these off-the-shelf supermarket yeah, chocolates yeah. as well, which you do finish the whole bar yeah, for. But like like, like what FD is saying, how do you become a connoisseur yeah, what, of, what am I of looking good chocolate? For? I think first, the, the, the mouthfeel. Mm. You know, so if, if there's a snap, if there's a good um, temper, um, that's great. There's, there's also a lot of cocoa butter in it instead of maybe oil or substitutes. Um, also, in terms of sugar, I mean, you can really kind of taste um, whether they put a substitute or not. Mm. And the cocoa mass, that's where it, it comes um, between the, the cheap ones and the expensive ones. I mean, the cocoa mass, you can really taste the profile of it. Whether it's, um, you've got nuances of like, let's say, grape skin notes, um, orange peel, um, fruit cake, even. You know, you don't get that in commercial chocolate. I don't think I'll be able to tell wow. on my own. I need to stay close to you, Jen. Wow. <laughs> Just stick close to you. So I want to talk about storing chocolates because I read an article once that it's not necessarily good in the fridge because it changes that obviously changes the temperature. Uh, it leads to something called sugar bloom, which means the sugar rises to the surface, discolors the chocolate, wow. uh, it condenses right. and all that. So I mean. For me, before I read that article, straight in the straight in the fridge because you don't want it melting on yeah. the counter. For sure. So where sure. where how should we store it, especially here in Singapore? Well, I, I reckon a lot of people, you know, don't have like wine fridges and stuff. So I mean storing the fridge is fine. As long as you kinda of put it uh, where where you store vegetables, for example. Not too cold. Mm. Okay. Um, but you know, the best way is it will condense a little bit. Mm. But you know, I think if you store it well and you wrap it well after you take it out from the fridge, let it rest for a while. Okay. And, you know, mm. don't eat chocolate when it's too cold. Let the uh, chill come out. I'll just okay. put it in my mouth and Straight just let away, it melt. melt. <laughs> yeah. So, does that change the flavor? Oh. Yeah, for sure. It changes the, the whole um, experience as well, mm. right? Because it's all about the five senses. Okay, okay. Nice. Mm, okay. So, which is why the wine chiller is perfect. Perfect. Yes. So, if you have a wine chiller at home, put your chocolates there. Yeah. Time to buy a wine chiller. Yeah, I know that's a great excuse. wine was I just put it in the fridge. <coughs> yeah, no, it shouldn't. So it shouldn't especially the reds. Yeah, you. But you. Yeah, we're talking about you though. <laughs> Thanks, yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> See, this is the kind of fantastic relationship we have now. No? Okay, angel, coming up, angel, angel. <laughs> okay, going back on it. Traffic. Only one situation. This is in the CTE tunnel towards the AYE before the Havelock exit. A vehicle has broken down there, clogging up some of the road. Uh, if you have any other news for us, it's 8855-0920. Welcome back to The Big Show and The Big Show TV. Our guest for this morning is uh, chocolate artist. Um, 
sh pastry chef extraordinaire, celebrity chef Janice Wong, who's with us. I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna backtrack a little bit for people who are just tuning in right now, and I've just gotten quite a number of uh, mm. messages. And you know what? This is around the time uh, people actually start to tune in yeah, as well. Yeah. Uh, Janice is with us now. Uh, Janice, for people who don't know. How did you get started in this industry uh, here in Singapore after your experience in Melbourne? Well, I think, you know, there was a gap in the um, sweet world, you know, and uh, I felt like I love chocolate so much. I love making desserts. Why not, you know, open something that kind of represents that? And, you know, that, that happened about 16, 17 years ago. This dream of mine to have a dessert bar and having late night desserts with wines and cocktails. But no frills, you know, something mm. that is not super fancy, but just right. really real. And um, I would say that's that's our little um, charming um, space in Holland Village. It's still there on the second floor. Um, so yes, so that's kind of where I started out. But you know, with evolution, I mean, with culture, travel, and so many of these events, I got a lot of inspiration. And one thing led to another, opening more outlets, um, doing more things, but also pushing myself to do um, different things. So opening a chocolate shop in 2014, that was something special as well. I think in Singapore, no one has seen these type of crazy colors in chocolate, but also crazy flavors. And uh, moving forward to that, then the edible art. I mean, mm. painting with chocolate, but most of all, it's um, giving you the experience of going up to the wall mm. and saying, is this real? Can I eat it? You know, mm. and uh, I'm giving you that memory that you would never forget. And I love creating that and it continues. So I think 16 years on, this is going to keep on going, but you'll be in for surprises all the time. Nice. Unbelievable. You know, speaking of inspiration, I mean, you've worked for some of the world's best chefs. Your Thomas Kellers, your uh, Spanish chocolatiers like Oriel, um, as well as Pierre Amé. Who inspires you? Whether It doesn't have to be, obviously, someone from the industry. It can mm. be anyone at all. It can be music. It can be family. But who inspires you? I think for me, definitely, it's um, a lot of architects, actually. Okay. You know, I, I love architecture. I love the way... Um, they think as well and um, so yes that that is one I think the other part is of course some chefs you know they they're really good at their craft um, for sure Pihame was one of them uh, when I was a kid and still is I mean look at him 30 years down and still continuing to reinvent himself um, that is very admirable I, I also feel that um, you know at this age it's hard to keep a business long enough I mean, if you're starting out two, three years, sure. But ask anyone around who has been here for 20 years. Mm. I think that's where that's where you become really, um, you know, inspired by people who actually really held it on so long, but yet continue to invent. Mm. You've done so much. You've done the chocolate. You've done the ice cream. What's the one thing you want to try? Ooh, dangerous question. <laughs> <laughs> On national radio as well. <laughs> well, I think for me, it's, it's you know, giving you the, the experience of, um, I would say, personalizing your own chocolate, right? I mean, mm. so you come for the workshop and you try it. But, you know, if I could give you that dream um, instantly, how would that make you feel? So, yeah, mm. I, I, I would love to try that one day um, and let that magic keep happening. Right. Nice. nice, leaving it to the consumer. Yeah, yeah. that is. Before nice. we let you go, once again, uh, uh, so you've got a new cafe at Gardens by the Bay. Tell everyone uh, about the Christmas offerings that you have. For sure, there's um, four to five different uh, Christmas cakes over there. We got the fruit cake, but you know, most importantly, you enjoy these Christmas cakes up at the Super Tree with a cup of coffee. The view is amazing Ooh. there. It's so calming. I think it's one of the best spots for for. For cafe, I have never been to the Super Tree. Oh, you're kidding! No, no I haven't. I've been, oh, I've been to, to Gardens by the Bay, but I've never been yeah, to, the Super, to tree. the Super Tree. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Mm. good reason to go now. Yeah, yeah. of course. Uh, reservations are recommended. Mm, for sure. I, I no? think it's just uh, ticketed. Walking? Yeah, oh, oh, it's ticketed. Oh, yeah, right. Okay. Ticketed. Okay. That's yeah. where you've been. I think. Yeah, that's why. Okay. Because <laughs> 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 I did too cheap to buy myself a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> One last question before we let you go. So, uh, would it be uh, safe to say that in terms of movies, your favorite movie would be Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? Oh yes. Wonka. You can say that. I love it. 
Uh, I've watched a new one. You have? Oh, yeah, you have what, yeah. what are your oh, immediate thoughts? You can't thoughts. ask me that. You can't ask me no, that. No, come on, come on. Do a, do a mini review wait, wait, for So us. you've watched everything. The 1971 yes, version with Gene Wilder yes. and then, of course, uh, Johnny Depp Johnny and, and Depp. right and now, now uh, Timothy, Timothy Chalamet. Oh, the best one is still the Gene Wilder one. But okay. I, I think for me, this is, this is fresh. It's new. You know, but there were so many opportunities to kind of push the imagination, right? And they didn't? But it was a lot about... I would say family, you know, and, and these values. And it's not about the product. It's mm. about the family. Coming from a chocolatier, yeah, I think she was there like, God, go. I was a bit disappointed there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. All, right. All right. Thank awesome. you so much, Janice. We've yet to catch it. I think I'm going to catch it this weekend. Yeah, it yeah. should be a good one. Thank you so much. Janice Wong Thank for you. joining us. Always a pleasure.